Hello. Okay. Hello. Can you hear me now? Okay. Um, that's too bad. Uh, that's really bad. I'm sorry. I just realized that there was no sound. Um, seems that it's working now. Um, we waste about 20 minutes. Yeah, that was okay. We only waste about 10 minutes. That was not too bad. Okay. Uh, so let's restart. I'm sorry. Uh, let's go back to the very beginning. So so that you know. Um, okay, because I really just didn't know this until now. Some there was some technical glitch with my microphone setup. I apologize. Let's go back to the very beginning. We have to restart. So today we were gonna talk about the so-called train and the bridge problem. So yesterday we talked about a special type of speed problem that was uh, involving a boat in the river. And the, the adjustment to our basic speed model was that because with the water flowing in the river, the speed of the boat will have to be adjusted and can be adjusted in two ways, upstream or downstream. And today we will see a different type of modification to our basic uh, speed problem. But before we talk about that, we really want to emphasize that both yesterday's problems and today's problem are not meant for you to memorize those special types of word problem. The real learning here is that we want to understand the nature of the problem and apply our basic knowledge to adapt our knowledge to a new problem. Math is never about mechanically memorizing tricks or formulas or how to solve a particular problem. Because you will face a new unknown or unseen problem all the time in the future in real life. And that's how if you go to graduate school, you will do new search, meaning that you will explore the new frontier of our human beings knowledge base. The real skill you are learning here is to apply what you know, what you have already understood to something new. And how to make that adjustment, it's really something that you want to develop over time. It cannot happen overnight, but once you understand the fundamental uh, nature of the, uh, the basic knowledge and the nature of the new problem, you can make a proper adjustment. Just think about what happened yesterday. We have a boat traveling in a river. So what had made the change that forced us to change our model? Well, a boat was traveling in a river that has some water flowing. And the water, because it was not still water like in the lake, will have to modify the speed of the boat. And the specific way of making that modification really depends on how the boat travels. If it travels upstream, its speed will have to be reduced because now the boat faces the current. On the other hand, if the boat travels downstream, its speed will go up because now the current is flowing in the same direction as the boat, so it will actually accelerate the boat. Therefore, our adjustment for that model is just really change the speed of the boat. And by taking account um, the direction that the boat travels, we will have to either add or subtract the water speed from the boat speed to get the real speed of the boat. And after that adjustment, the problem just becomes the basic speed problem. Okay, so that's one 
just saying that we learn how can we modify or adapt our basic model to a new type of problem. Today we will just study a new type of problem and this is called uh, the chain bridge problem. So the problem basically requires us to make one modification to our basic model. Recall our basic model of the speed problem is that we have three variables, distance, speed, and time. And it's a multiplicative relationship. The speed multiplied by time will give you the distance. And conversely, you will use division Distance divided by time will give you speed. Distance divided by speed will give you the time. So what kind of modification will we make to this basic model? Well, in this model, we modify the meaning of distance. And that's really determined by the very nature of this type of problem. So what is a train uh, bridge problem? So Essentially, we have the following. We have a bridge here in the red, like a suspension bridge, like just like a, the Golden Gate Bridge in San Francisco, or any type of bridge. So the bridge has a lens, which is measured here. So there's a tram, this green box. This tram will pass through the bridge, so in this direction. We are interested in how long the train will take to pass through the bridge. So we have to agree on what exactly what we mean by passing through the bridge, right? So typically what we mean is the following. We observe at the moment when the front of the train just about to enter the bridge. That means the train is right here. So the front of the train is just perfectly, ideally, or well, you can just imagine, this is a kind of idealized situation, right? The front of the train is perfectly aligned with the entrance of the bridge. And we measure from that point on. And when the train completely leaves the bridge. That is observed from the back of the chair, not from the front of the chair. So when we observe from the back of the chair, when that back is again perfectly aligned with the exit point of the bridge. So that's at this point. We want to know how much time the train took to pass through the train in this fashion. Okay, clearly, this is a speed-related problem, but what do we need to modify? Well, the speed is speed. The train does not change the speed or anything, so that's something we need to know uh, no matter what. The time it takes, however, is interesting. We know time is determined by distance and speed, so we really need to figure out what kind of distance are we talking about here? So the train take, takes maybe a couple of minutes or a few seconds to pass the train. So how much did the train actually travel? Is the distance just the same as the bridge length measured from this point to this point? The answer is no. The reason the answer is no is that when we say, um, we just define what we mean by the train passing through the, the bridge. But remember that at the beginning, we measure from the front of the train. At the end, we measure from the back of the train, right? Those two are not consistent. So that cannot be used for us to define how long the train has traveled. We have to compare apple to apple, orange to orange. Therefore, you either measure the distance from the back of the chain. That means that at this moment, we do not take a look from this viewpoint. We have to take a look from 
the trace back at that viewpoint because if we want to compare the moment when Chen completely left, left the, the bridge, we observe from the back. So either at the beginning, you also take a look from the back of the chain, or if you persist, I want to calculate our starting point from the front of the chain, then when the chain exits, you will also have to look from the front of the chain, from that point, viewpoint. Either way, you will see that the real distance the chain has traveled during this time is not just the length of the bridge. It must also include the length of the chain itself. So either this distance from the front to the front or this distance from the back to the back. You have to do that. You cannot take one from the front, the other from the back. That's not the real the distance that the train has traveled, right? But either way, we will see that the actual distance the train has traveled is the sum of the bridge length and the train's length. Only that can be used. Anything else would be incorrect. That's why we see that in our basic model, the distance now has been updated to, to be the train's length plus the bridge length. Of course, the time we are talking about here is what we just mean, how much time the train took to pass through the bridge. And of course, concept bridge here is just uh, illustrative. It could be something like a tunnel or anything of similar nature. Accordingly, all the other two formula will be uh, updated as well. So speed in this case will be the trans length plus the, the bridge length divided by time. And time will has, have to be uh, train length plus bridge length divided by speed. So that's just the modification we need to change. So you can see that yesterday we changed the meaning of speed because of the water in the river. Today, we change the meaning of the distance because of the specific case in, uh, in this type of problem. We define passing through in that fashion. It's just the train has not entered the bridge or the tunnel at all uh, from that point until the train has completely left the bridge. And that distance will have to add the length of the trim into the distance. That's the adjustment we make. Okay, now let's do several word problem to um, apply this uh, modification, okay? So, the first problem. At the speed of 900 minute, uh, meters per minute, a train is passing through a tunnel. That is 2,400 meters long. After entering the tunnel, the train takes three minutes to exit the tunnel. Clearly, say it's observed by its back. That's what we just mean. How long is the train? Well, this is a quite straightforward uh, word problem. But if you have never done a problem of this nature, it's time to recall what you need to learn or what you need to know. That's just what we discussed. In this case, first understand this is a word problem. And it's a special word problem that we actually discussed, right? We just discussed it. So what do we need to know? We need to know the trans length. But why is that relevant? Because in this speed problem, we will have to add this to the length of the tunnel in order to get the true distance, because that's what it means, right? After entering the tunnel, meaning that the front of the train just at, just at that moment, entering the tunnel, to exit tunnel, by exiting, we mean the end, the back of the train completely left the tunnel. It cannot be part of the train still in the tunnel. That's not exit, that's still during the exit. So in this case, clearly, 
the model is what we just discussed here. Um, let's just imagine this is a tunnel uh, instead of bridge. So we measure the two uh, moments between the front of the train entering the tunnel and the end of the train exiting the tunnel. So what is the distance here? Well, the distance here must be the speed and times the time, right? Because those things will not change. So it takes three minutes. And what is the speed? It's 900 meters per minute. Therefore, during those three minutes, how long the train traveled? Clearly, it's 900 times three equals to 2,700 meters. Always remember, add a unit to whatever you wrote so that you know you what you are doing. Otherwise, this may not be very meaningful. So we know during this time, the three minutes, the train traveled 2,700 uh, meters. But this tunnel is only 2,400 uh, 200, meters long. What that means? That means the rest is the train's length. So this problem is very straightforward. Application, um, you subtract that to get 300 meters. And that is what we are required to solve. That is the trans length. If you do one step um, operation, that's just really 900 times three minus 2400. That's what you need to write, okay? Usually it's important to know it's a good practice to force yourself, even if you cannot do it all at once, to write down expression, what we call one step operation, because this will force you to organize your logic. And this clearly shows the inherent relationship between the two um, operations. Those two, if you roll them in isolation, it's more difficult to see the logic there. But this version, it forces you to put those two things together. And this operation, the subtraction, demonstrate the, uh, the, the logic. So this is a straightforward word problem. But it is a model that you need to understand, OK? Let's do another problem. It takes a train which is 200 meters long, two minutes and five seconds to pass through a bridge at the speed of eight meters per second. How long is the bridge? OK. So you understand what we just talked about, the relationship between bridge slants and the train slants. <laughs> Is this the same problem? Yes, it looks like this is the problem we just discussed, just with different um, availability of the parameters. So now we know the time, the train two, that's two minutes and five seconds to pass through the bridge. We know the speed, that's eight meters per second. Therefore, we know the total distance the train traveled, right? Just like the last problem. But this part time, we know the train's length, but we need to know the bridge's length. So very close to last problem, but we just swap the two quantities. One is known, one is the unknown. So last time we know the, the bridge's length, but we don't know train's length. This time we know the train's length, we need to figure out the bridge's length. So, that's quite straightforward, almost like last time, but we do need a little bit um, additional conversion. That is, we know the speed is eight meters per second. And we know the time is a compound one. It's two minutes and five seconds. So we have to first make adjustment, make sure that we are comparing apple to apple, applying apple to apple. So the time will has to be 
just two minutes five seconds. That is two times sixty plus five. That's the amount of time we know this is a one hundred twenty-five, right? Now with this no time, we are trying to do one step here. The next step is that you know the time, you know the speed, so you want to get the distance that the train travels. So we know this is the speed. So rather than computing it right away, we want to continue to do our analysis of problem. We are not in a hurry to get this number. So we know this is the speed, uh, the time. We multiply that by the speed, so times eight, because the speed was given to us in terms of meters per second, not per minute. That's exactly why we were doing this conversion in the first place to get the time in seconds, not minutes and seconds. Okay, so what did we get just now? Well, we get this just like last time, time times speed, that's distance the train traveled. So what do we need to know? Well, how long is the bridge? So we know this, what we got here is the total of the bridge length and the train length. Therefore, with this known, all we need is to subtract the one that we know, which is the, the uh, train length to get the other, which is the bridge length. So this has to be adjusted by subtracting 200, which is the train length. That will give us the bridge length. So let's just do that. So 2 times 60, that's 120, plus 5, that's 125. So why don't we write that? And minus 8, uh, uh, multiply 8, then minus 200. So 125 times 8, here is what you really need to memorize things well, okay? Because 125 times 8, that's just 1,000. Okay, this is important because when you learn fraction, what is 1 eighth, which is very common? That's 0 0.125. So, this is just 1,000, subtracting 200, equals to 800 meters. Okay, so that's the length um, of the bridge. No big deal, but you do need to learn how to formally write a solution for a problem. For example, in this case, it's not on scratch paper. My understanding is that you are seldomly required to do things like this because the most standardized exam will never ask you, they never ask you to do this. If you do competition math like AMC, math count ROS, the same thing, um, kangaroo, you are not required to write down the formal procedure like this. You just need to give the answer. Sometimes you don't even that, you just make a choice among multiple choices. But we do need to learn how to formally write a solution. In this case, it's one step. If you feel difficult about this, I cannot write down so many things all at once, then it is okay to first write it as multiple steps. We can just do two times 60 plus five equals to 125. 125 times 8, which is speed, meters per second. So we get this as 1,000. And finally, 1,000 subtracting 200 give us 800 meters. But I ignore all the, the time, which I should add 120 seconds. So that is second. And this is meters, and this is meters. Okay, so that's how you write a solution. Um, you can now, this is just isolated steps, which is fine. Also, after getting more experience, you actually want to write all those three things into one simple expression like this. See, this is nothing but row three put in one expression, okay? The adding part, the multiplying A part, then subtracting part. All the three merge into one, um, what we call one step operation, okay? It's important to do this. Don't be lazy and don't think that just because nobody really cares, I should do things like in AMC so that I just give the answer. 
That is really bad. You want to learn um, how to clearly write down a solution. So this actually does not only help you to avoid mistakes, but also help you to learn how to organize your logic. And while the problem we are studying right now are relatively simple and easy, you will encounter much more complex math problem in the future. It's very important to train yourself to get logically clear um, and um, logically uh, solid. Okay, so let's take a look at the next word problem. Okay, so a cargo chain, which is 225 meters long, um, leaves the station at a speed of 17 meters per second. Okay, fine. We just know it lands and um, speed. Just after the cargo train left the, uh, the station, um, another train, a passenger train, which is 140 meters long, shorter, leaves the station at the same direction in the uh, at the same time in the same direction so the passenger train just like the the, the cargo train they're going to the same uh, place at least in the same direction but the thing is that this passenger train left at the same time okay um, how long will the passenger train to completely pass the cargo train? Because they're traveling in parallel, right? It says that maybe the next track. Okay. But the thing is that we have to read this problem carefully. The problem asks you how long will it take the passenger train to completely pass the cargo train? This sounds like the, the, the chasing problem we studied last week, right? You have one train or one person, whatever that is, leave first. Now, at some point, you at a higher speed start trying to catch up with the earlier train or earlier person. This is a chasing problem to catch up. But we do need to know what the problem means. Without understanding the problem correctly, you cannot solve the problem. So the problem says that just after the cargo train left the station, as observed by the train's back. So that's really just say um, if we have destination, initially we have two trains here. So the problem, so as um, just after the cargo train left the station, as observed by the train's back. That means that, what do we mean by that? At that time, the cargo train is right here, right? Because that's the back, where the back left the station. Let's just say, before, this, is, this vertical bar is kind of the starting line. And all the trains could be piped or lined up after that. So if the train just left the station completely, so its back should be right here. That's at the, the starting one. Okay, just at that, the passenger start to chase its cargo train in parallel on the next track in the same direction. Okay, so how long will the passenger train to completely pass the cargo train? What does that mean? That means that when this happens, let's just say the cargo train is here, where should the, the passenger train be? The passenger train be exactly here, right? That's when you just completely pass it. And it's in short, even say, I'm right here at this moment, did I pass the train? No, not yet, because there's still overlapped um, portion with both. So this is a line here. So we see that 
for for the cargo train is the front, but at this point, um, the the passenger train um, is not. So we have to actually measure at this. So what does that mean? Well, that means that at the beginning, the passenger train when it start started chasing, it's right here, right? The cargo train just left. And when the catch up happens, the the red train, the passenger train is completely ahead of the passenger train. But what happened here? Just imagine if at this time, if it just traveled at exactly the same speed as the cargo train, it will never catch up the uh, cargo train. It always, because the speed would imaginatively right here, right? If this, the, the passenger train did not gain anything. It was right behind the cargo train at the beginning, and it's still right behind the cargo train at this moment, if the, uh, the passenger train is in such a position. But it is not, it's here. So during this amount of time, the passenger traveled this long, this uh, this uh, distance longer than the the cargo train, and this is the distance that we talked about last week when we have a chasing problem, right? In this sense, um, the the passenger train completely passed the cargo train, so the distance the difference between the two distances, one is traveled by the cargo train, the other is traveled by the passenger train, the difference is actually this value. Does that make sense? Yes. <coughs> Excuse me. Now we know the distance is that much. How long will it take? Well, you have to use the speed problem. This distance divided by the time, right? <coughs> so what is the time? Um, uh, that's what we need to figure out. So we have a 225 uh, long cargo train. We have a 140 meters passenger train. So the total is 225 plus 140. That's the distance we talk about here. That's actually the difference between the two distances, right? But we know this particular model um, in last week, we know this will have to be decided by the speed difference. And what is speed difference? The cargo train is clearly slower, that's 17 meters per second, while the passenger train is 22 meters per second. Therefore, that speed difference is actually, this is just five, right? So now we know the distance and we know the speed, both are in terms of the difference because this, this difference of the speed that helped contribute to the difference of distance that traveled. Therefore, we know the time is simply this quantity divided by this quantity. So we wrote this in one step, but if you need multi steps, that's okay. Probably you will write this in three isolated steps. Also, logically, this actually is much more clearer because you know this is a division and the divider is the time difference and the dividend is the distance difference. But we can now, without any equation or something, we can solve this directly uh, in the arithmetical way. So 225 plus 140, that's just 365. Oh my goodness, 335. So it's New Year again. I'm really looking forward to that break. So divided by 
22 minus 17, that's 5. Okay, now the rest is quite straightforward. So 71. And never ever forget what we are talking about here. So we have to uh, look at this. This is the time that will take. So this is seconds. Of course, you can say this is the one minute and 11 seconds, something like that. But for now, this is good enough for us. The time is 71. Okay? So, let's take another problem. Okay, it takes a train 88 seconds to pass through a tunnel that is 2,000 meters long, a long tunnel, and 58 seconds to pass another tunnel that is a shorter one, 1,250 meters long. How long is the train and what is speed? Um, this sounds a little bit more difficult because we do not seem to have a lot of information. We don't know the train's length. That means that the distance we cannot roll and know if the problem is expect to be solved just as what we did in the last few problems. We don't even know that. We don't even know the train's length. Maybe we need to know. Yes, we are asked to solve that. But we don't even know the speed either. Here, we, we were given two statements, but in each one, it looks in, um, insufficient to solve the problem, right? We don't know the, um, the speed. How can we do that? Remember? For that multiplicative relationship, we have three variables, and given any two, we will know the other. But if we are only given one, then we cannot solve. In this case, we don't know the trace length or the speed. We merely know the time that the trace um, uh, takes to pass through something, but that something is not in the picture here. It's not part of the distance yet. Or even if pass, we still don't know the trace length, so we still don't know the total length if we're trying to use the model we just learned. What can we do here? Well, sometimes some conditions or constraints are not stated for you. But from reading the problem, you can clearly make those unspoken assumptions for yourself. What is such unstated uh, assumption. The assumption is that, first of all, the trans length and speed remain the same in both cases, right? That's a given. They should not change. Otherwise, this problem, you know, um, problem is not trying to test you on some English problem. It's really the same train travels at same speed and gave us different time, not only because 2,000 uh, um, and 1,250, one they're not the same. But how can we solve this problem? Apparently, it's the speed. We need to find the three things and relate them. We need speed, we need the distance, and time. And the time is being, um, a speed is being asked for here, and the length of the train is also being asked. <coughs> the assumption here is the train will travel at the same speed in both cases, and its length will not change. So, if that's the case, what did the condition give us? It gave us two trials, like two experiments. The first time it goes through a 2,000 meters tunnel, it takes you 88 seconds. The second time, I take a shorter tunnel and took less time. And that's the that's the scene. We can relate those two to each other, right? And how? Because the speed won't change. If we subtract the second one from the first one. That's pretty much like a, you know, a chasing problem. So you can talk about it just like you imagine those two statements 
those two statements are not talking about one train in two separate conditions, like talking about two trains, but running at about the same time. Just imagine you align the two on the paper. The two trains for those two journeys, they, they travel in the same direction, starting at the same time. If that's the case, this really becomes a chasing problem. Also, in this case, um, it never kind of catching up, right? But still, you have something like a, you have a distance, you have the first train right here, it's just starting in that direction. But at the same time, how about if I have my own train? I know you are excellent. Uh, just uh, running very fast, so I cannot tell you. I just shadowed you um, on a separate track. Something will just along the same way chasing you. So the difference between the speed determined the distance between the distances that the two trains travel, right? Just like in the chasing problem. The difference between the distance divided by time will be the difference of the speed. So here the same thing, why one traveled 2,000 uh, meters and the other only traveled 1,250? Okay, because the time provided is different. Okay, so how can we solve this? Give, I give you half a minute to think about this problem. Okay. So the takeaway is that because the, the length of the train, the speed did not change at all. So this additional amount of distance, which is 2000, minus 1,250. This is the difference between the two distances that the same train traveled. Why this is true? Because it traveled at two, um, in two different times. And the times difference is really the reason why we have different distances. So first time the train traveled 88 seconds, and the second time, only 58 seconds. So there's an additional 30 seconds right here in the second um, expression here. 30 diff, uh, seconds of actual travel. Of course, that will generate some actual distance that the train traveled, and that is this. And the relationship, of course, is division distance divided by time, but we understand this give us the speed, right? Because this give us the actual distance of time that traveled. This, we're talking about the 30 seconds of actual travel. And this create the result. Correspondingly, we get 750 meters of actual distance. So if we divide the form of the latter by the former, that gives us the speed. So this is truly 750 divided by uh, 30. So this is 15. 15 watt. You have to look at the, the distance of the measurement we use. So the ton, uh, the, the tunnel's length in terms of meters. So we are talking about the distance in meter and we're talking about the, the, the time in second. So this is the speed is meter per second. Okay, it's very important for you. Every time of the way, um, at the end, you add a unit to your number so that you know what you're talking about. This not only makes the job much easier for later one, also um, it's easier for you to check if you ever make a mistake. Did I confuse my thing? Did not convert some unit to another more appropriate unit? So that's something. But in this case, 
we were merely asked to say what is the speed. So the speed is just 15 meters per second, which is very really simple. So you can see that also we talk about several different types of uh, problem of this nature. Sometimes they can involve additional sub problems from another type of word problem, right? In this last problem, it's essentially like a chasing problem. Also, it was not presented in such a way, but you have to recognize logically that's the same thing. You just kind of move the second travel along with the third, same travel. The second travel travels through time so that it comes to the same physical um, um, just uh, um, neighborhood of the, the first travel. So therefore, you do this, um, you can solve this. Now let's talk about something a, 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 a little bit uh, additional. So in this type of problem, we see that the real challenge is to figure out what is the total distance, right? Sometimes the problem can be changed, say, you are not required to add those two things up. It could be something like right here. This is perfect aligned. And we cannot tell in advance. It's really, you take what the problem tells you, you do not apply mechanically a formula, equation, or even a concept what you learn to a problem. That you cannot do that. You really just look at the nature, what the problem actually expects you to do. Okay? So today's takeaway is really we now see how to extend a basic model, very basic, to something that requires us to do some additional adjustment to the basic model. Okay? And that's very important in math because you will never say your in your future career or even life, the way you use math is just you, you have some pre-cooked meals whenever you take it out, heat it, and then eat. No, it's not like that. You do not have a collection of just a canned meal. You have a skill set. You know how to cook. So if you are given raw materials of food, you know how to convert them into a meal, applying your skill. You are not just blindly take a problem as a canned food, eat it right away. Okay, so that's today's, um, uh, this type of chain bridge problem. It's very important to understand what we just did. And uh, for any given problem, you look at the wording, looking for patterns that help you ascertain what the problem is. In those problems, it sometimes can be very confusing. And unfortunately, if that's from a real exam, you probably will not get a, a clear answer because the proctor probably, um, he or she will not be in the position to make adjustment. He just said, read the problem. And that's your job to understand the problem. Okay? Um, I, I'm sorry uh, that was a glitch earlier. Uh, luckily, we, we were able to catch up. So um, uh, we after today, we will go back to the basic arithmetic of integers. And um, uh, it will be a while uh, before we talk about the word problems once again. In another, of course, in the, for newer um, uh, type of problems. Okay, I will see you next week. Thank you. Bye-bye.